I'm going to record um, me recounting my experience <clears throat> as best as I can with what I remember. <clears throat> First night I got there, I was very tense. I could feel the tension in my neck and my shoulders. I wasn't necessarily nervous, which uh, surprised me a little bit because old me would have been very nervous. Um, I <clears throat> remember just observing everybody as they came in and not necessarily feeling connected to anybody or wanting to really talk to or open up to anybody, kind of to myself. Um, that first night I really went into the experience choosing to focus on gratitude, being so blessed to even experience any of this, to be a part of any of this, to um, be blessed enough to have this experience. And knowing that no matter what happened, <clears throat> I was going to be thankful. And it was what I needed, whatever it was. <sighs> um, the first thing I noticed the first night would have been deep love. <clears throat> I'm going to be clearing my throat a lot because I keep expelling. Um, it's part of the medicine. Uh, probably going to say, uh, a lot. deep love, where I felt the energy of Io, just so much love through every cell. I just felt it poured into me how much I am loved innately, like without trying, without having to prove or prove myself or be or do or, you know, be perceived or anything like that. I am just loved. And that was very beautiful. Um, one of the first things I remember knowing that things had started was that I was very aware that my mouth was being mm, prodded to some extent. Like if it was being <laughs> the muscles and everything, the tissues felt like they were being adjusted in my mouth. And I just like allowed it. It kind of felt as though something was like <laughs> manipulating the space inside my mouth and I just allowed it. And I do know that I have a tongue and a lip tie, so I tend to like force my top lip to stay closed. But if I'm comfortable, my lips don't touch. And so I think that was me, it was just trying to relax my face potentially. Um, I'm going to refer to my notes because I did take notes uh, when I found time and I am too studious. I study life and I'm very analytical and receiving and under trying to compute information. Um, I love to learn, but I am too studious. I am constantly trying to study and learn. Um, I need to find my mischievous wonderment. Those are the words that came to me because it was like this very, um, uh, like I, I got the Loki energy, kind of like this playful prankster, like, hee hee hee. Um, I was like giddy inside and I've lost some of that, um, over time of, um, I think really the biggest thing, um, okay, before I move on to the next thing is get lost in the strange and giggle at it. I tend to resist things that like don't innately feel like my thing. Like if I don't instantly resonate with it, I'm like, mm, mm -mm, I don't want to experience that. But I'm like not expanding in ways that I could expand, you know, in areas that I wouldn't normally go like tap into. And so there was lots of noises and frequencies happening in this space for this experience that was making me giggle. So I was like, just like the weirdest tones were happening and I was like, <laughs> just giggling. And I think I forget to, uh, I forget to be in the moment and to laugh and to relax, right? Um, hmm. Trusting the process was a big thing of just like being gracious and saying I trust whatever happens, happens. So trust, I think, was the actual theme for the whole experience, like 
both knights combined was trust. Um, that's where it was. Remember I said I, I forgot how to have fun, I forgot how to laugh, is because uh, becoming a mother had a sobering effect for me. Um, I feel like I didn't quite trust myself as a mother and I had to get very serious and like responsible and um, get my feet on the ground and take myself seriously so that I could be a good mom. Well, I lost my, my silliness and my like flexibility because I didn't trust myself. But now I'm at the point now where I know I'm a good mom. I trust that I'm a good mom. And I can relax. And I can just be fun sometimes. I don't have to always be doing something. I'm constantly trying to be busy. I don't need to be, right? Be goofy with her, make more eye contact and more touch. Oh, the, the, my father's, my father, my daughter's father, Sean, loves this part. And I knew he was going to love this part. Uh, Sean is right when it comes to his outlook on life. I have been so rigid. Um, he, he welcomes me to like, relax, calm down, like take a chill pill and get silly, listen to some weird shit, uh, get out of your comfort zone. And I'm always so like, no, Shauna's uncomfortable. Like, my body has been in fight or flight for several years. Uh, functioning freeze is what I've learned a word for it. It's like where you're technically in freeze mode, where you want to just be paralyzed, but you can't in this world, so you gotta, you gotta force yourself. And so, yeah, that's where I've been. And so it's really hard to like step out of that and to relax into the moment. I don't have to produce or do anything or serve anyone. I could just be, too. Um, and that we are shelters for one another. We are both tired. With these words came the visual of me and Sean being forehead to forehead and like leaning on each other and just being exhausted. You could see just like heavy breathing and like heaviness. And we were forehead to forehead leaning on each other and it's like, we are here to help each other rest and rejuvenate. We are here to help, like, protect each other from the drama and the fuckery. And, you know, this world is a beautiful world to me. And I don't have a negative outlook on the world. But you know there's some shitty shit, right, out in the world. And we're here to, like, protect each other and have balance for each other. So there's at least a space where we can come to put down that guard. But see, I've never really put down that guard, and neither has he. If we're working on that now, if you to put down that guard and just be safe and be secure for each other, let him be right. <laughs> I resist so much because I'm like, well, just because you think that doesn't mean I have to think that. And it's like, I just resist for the sake of resisting because, like, I'm, well, mm -hmm. um, relax into discomfort at times for expanse. Yeah. Relax into discomfort because that's where you find things you wouldn't normally find. Um, here we go. I'm such a freaking brat. I, I put the actual F bomb. Um, or a crotchety old man. Those specific words. Uh, it's like, I just feel like, mm, fuck that. I don't have to. Mm. I know you want me to laugh at this, but I feel like you're, you're expecting a laugh. And because you're expecting a laugh, I don't want to laugh. Um... I can't really get sucked into movies a lot of the times, um, unless it's like a really damn good movie, but like I resist it because I'm like, what are you trying to make me think? What are you trying to make me feel? It's like a manufactured experience and I'm like, mm, I don't have to give myself to it. But then again, how much am I really living if I'm just naturally resisting life, you know? Um, not allowing myself to just succumb to an experience, resisting for the sake of having a choice in the matter. Not being fully present by letting the experience move me. On to the next. Uh, I've become unmovable. Um, clinging to an illusion of security and safety by controlling my environment and inner space. But I am inherently safe. I am fully supported, so embrace the new things that life has to offer. Um... Unmovable to me means like I have encased myself in a protective mode to where I don't let things in and I don't let certain things out and I don't allow myself to relax because 
I don't feel safe to. But I am inherently safe. I just am. Um, so to let things move me is to allow that song to take you to the next level and to allow that movie to make you fucking break down. Um, to, you know, feel adoration for someone which I like I stop like I don't feel these things I just don't let them penetrate fully it's like I've I've used the um, metaphor I've waterproofed my heart to where I could feel things I'm aware of things emotions but I don't let it like penetrate or permeate into my cells like before I used to be so sensitive everything was intense and every emotion ring through me like a bell like if you were to gong something you could feel it through your whole body that's how every emotion was for me it was almost too powerful so over time with being mishandled and life you know I got to the point where I, I've hardened up and I've gotten resistant to letting things in and I'm at the point now where I'm trying to lower that guard and to know what's worth my time and what's not and allow things in that deserve to be let in and to know when my boundaries need to be applied. So, that was the first night. Um, there was a point too during that first night that I didn't feel as though I was crying. Like I didn't like, I wasn't, you know, sobbing and having this whole experience, but I was laying there and thinking and I was having beautiful thoughts. I don't exactly remember exactly what thoughts. I think it had to do with me and Sean. And I was literally, my eyes were just I was sideways, right? So they were just like pouring down my face. I just had tears, but I wasn't crying. And I wasn't necessarily sad, but they were like happy tears just streaming out of my face, which I thought was very beautiful. I'm gonna stop this and start another one for the second journey.